G'day folks. Now oh, it's one of those afternoons where uh, we talk about stuff and ramble about stuff and have a look at some different things. Um, basically working out different projects and things the turbo jet's going to take a little while. Uh, I would like to at least spin it up. I still have to make a combustor for it so it's not going to be soon that we power it up but I'd like to um, make a combustion chain before it properly. I mean I've studied the uh, Rolls-Royce Viper combustor that Leo Kim video sent me and uh, I've got a fair idea on how they work. Also um, a big thanks to Agent JZ who uh, is a professional jet technician in the industrial sector. Uh, his channel is really awesome. It's all about industrial jets and private fighter jet engines and things like that. He's worked on uh, Sabre jet engine and uh, various General Electrics and other bits and pieces. Um, yeah, some really cool stuff. So I've learned a lot from watching pretty much all of his videos, many of them a couple of times. And uh, yeah, combustor design is crucial as, long as, as well as exhaust gas temperature going into the turbine. It's not just a matter of stuffing whatever flaming gas you get. It, you, you can destroy your exhaust turbine very quickly. So yeah, some very good information out there. I'm going to put a uh, thermocouple on it to monitor exhaust gas temp just as soon as I fix my current one, which is that. Um, it sort of works. It was working for a while and now the, um, the readings fluctuate by many degrees just constantly. It's just flickering and carrying on. So I'm going to check the power input again. This is one that I built. I built using a new power supply from an old swimming pool controller and it's just going absolutely crazy now so that's a bit unfortunate. It was working fine when I put it together but I'm thinking I need some uh, more power filtration going in. I'll tear it down and see what's happening. Um, yeah and as far as starting this is concerned the uh, blower I can't run on single phase I'm guessing because it's a two pole motor. I tried it in Star and Delta using start and run caps, that sort of thing. Uh, potential relays, probably overkill. This kit, it's a kickstart kit, it's rated 3.5 to 5 horsepower and I'm trying to run it on a 0.75 or 1 horsepower motor. So I don't think the potential relay is even getting the current flow to trip over, which is a bit of a pain. Uh, so unless I can find a smaller potential relay and try that, I don't think I'm going to be able to kickstart this thing and really get it going. I mean, it almost spools up. It sounds like it wants to, it almost wants to reach full power, but the motor gets really hot, so it's not safe to run it like that without destroying it. So that can just, it can stay there for now, and I'll probably park park this in the corner here just for the time being. Uh, other VFD, the China VFD hasn't come good. I haven't pulled it to bits yet, but that's the next step. I'll pull it to bits and have a good look at it and just see what's going on inside because I'm um, past the 30 day guarantee, that's for sure. I stupidly put it aside thinking I'd just install it straight on the turret lathe and just never got around to it, so I never officially powered it up when I got it. Um, I know they say it advertise a two-year warranty, but I don't like my chances on that one, assuming I can find my receipt and the uh, receipt, PayPal receipt from the seller. But, I don't know, I've already pulled it apart once before, so I've already voided the warranty, I think. Well, I haven't broken that seal there, but that's the thing. If I pull this apart, I'm going to void the warranty. So, yeah, either way. Um... There are tons of them on eBay varying in price. People want up to like $300 for the same drive. I think I paid about 90 plus shipping. So it's not a huge loss. It's just a pain that I didn't even get a few months use out of it. I was expecting six months and that was about it. Didn't even get that. So be very careful of those cheap China VFDs. It's pretty much 90% of the search results on eBay is people selling those in anything from 0.75 up to uh, 3.5 kilowatt varieties and some the prices also vary wildly for the exact same drive so be very careful and don't pay too much because they're pretty much all the same they all come from Hunyang inverter uh, yeah this thing spins quite freely I've had oil pressure up to 50 psi it sits there idling away quite nicely but I'm thinking 
The other option is to take that motor off and put a DC motor on there and use a um, Triac, um, sorry not Triac, uh, MOSFET based um, DC speed controller. I'll use a Curtis DC controller. That's the other option or I try and find one at work and borrow that for a weekend or something. Not that we ever, ever use them but I'll just borrow it off because they're a Delta brand VFD and they're quite expensive. Not as bad as Alan Bradley or any of the big ones but still a few hundred dollars worth. I'll see if I can borrow one from work if I can find one big enough. I found one today but that was 0.4 kilowatts. Even though this thing isn't pulling many amps I don't want to risk blowing it up and having to replace it. Um, and that drive there would end up on this. That drive has no problem driving this blower in uh, Delta. It's in Star at the moment but I uh, have tried it in Delta and it won't run without a uh, VFD. Which is a shame because it's an awesome air start blower. This thing puts out a lot of CFM. I don't, not so much concerned about static pressure, I just want a lot of CFM through a 3 inch hose. And this thing will do it for sure. Anyway, what else? Uh, hydraulics can wait for the time being. I'm not sure whether I'm going to tear this up completely apart for parts because it's got a really big pump in it. I want to see how this motor comes off, whether this part of the housing is wet. If there's oil inside this part of the housing and the motor itself is completely sealed then it's not going to be so practical as a whole unit but if this thing here is like a sealed bell housing then I could probably leave this bell housing on assuming it's bolted on independently and uh, yeah probably run a drive shaft into the coupling I guess it's got a flex disc coupling or something like that on it run a, um, a shaft into the coupling and uh, just couple it up to the uh, Yanmar diesel all on its own that way I can take that piddly little PTO pump off it and actually use this thing which has almost one inch outlets on it and most of it seems to go through this bypass valve when it's running. I haven't run it yet but you can just see with the way it's plumbed in they've got a uh, full half or three quarter inch line going to this bypass and the line just dumping straight out of it so trying to put three quarter inch flow through a fitting like this this thing's got to be dumping a shitload of pressure into the tank again it's going to be wasting a lot of pressure so I'll take this valve block off and do something else. Uh, the valve solenoids are 196 volts DC, although they've been looks like they've been stuffing uh, 240 volt AC into them according to the control panel that I've opened up. There's no rectifier, there's no DC side, and these are even uh, polarity protected. So they've been feeding 240 volts into them and they've been working fine, but I'd rather a bigger valve and go lower voltage DC on the uh, control side preferably even 12 volts although it's not to say I couldn't get a 24 volt truck alternator and make it all 24 but I'd like a standalone power unit with no 240 volt or three phase input that way the shredder, the shredder and the power unit can be wheeled outside coupled together and just go for it without any, uh, any need for a mains, mains interaction but that's possibly wishful thinking at this point. I don't have all the resources around to do it. It'd just be nice to see it make it work. So yeah, that's where that's at. That power unit, I'll do a, I'll take it apart, take the lid off properly and show you, but if I can't couple the whole thing up, I'll use it for bits because it's got a nice uh, filler and everything on it and a filter. I've got a tank out in the carport that I can use. Um, it's just a bit of welding, TIG welding, that sort of stuff. The valve I'm not sure on, it's a fairly small valve, it's all half inch. So even then, half inch through that big hydraulic motor would not run it up to high speed, which is not what I want. I want low speed, high pressure. So I'm thinking maybe half inch into, into these lines isn't such a bad idea, considering they're only three quarter to an inch. Inside diameter would be three quarter inch outside's barely an inch. I know I'm talking imperial again but you don't measure this shit in metric. None of this stuff's measured in metric. This is all, even though it's made in Germany, I imagine it's all inch. Um, all the hydraulic stuff, I've never seen hydraulic stuff measured in uh, metric apart from output shafts and input shafts. I think that's a 55 millimeter shaft. So yeah, it's a bit tight. It's actually got check valves so I'm turning against back pressure. Spill to tank for the little one. 
Yeah, it's not too bad. It'll work. Loads of torque. 200, I think it's like 240 newton meters of torque at, two, at 600 RPM. Top. But if I feed high pressure but lower volume, I should be able to get that speed right down. But um, there'd just be a, a curve. A torque curve is you, you throw something in there and as the cutter comes down on top of it it's got to build back pressure and you'll just get this torque curve so it's it's not a hundred percent practical but I think it could work it could really work otherwise I've got to look at a big gear reducer like a helical gear or planetary gear reducer or something like that and that's all kinds of complication but yeah I think that's about all for now. I know you can see a giant switch and a stationary um, constant firing throttle governed engine there. We'll look at them later. That one I've already done a video on. That's a sundial two and a half horsepower, I think. I think it is. It should be. Is it? Yeah. It's a sundial type B two horsepower. It's only a little baby. Easy enough to work on. Um, and that, we'll look at that later. That's a nice big mains switch. That's been stored in that, that was in the back corner. It's been there for the last two years or so. But yeah. Nah, it's got a heavy throw on it. It's a nice switch. I just wish I had somewhere to use it. I've got a feeling I'm going to have to strip this thing down just for scrap. But I don't really want to. It's just worth... Probably worth too much as it is as scrap because there's a lot of copper and cop uh, silver plated contacts in there. And it's pretty rough. It's got a lot of rust through it. I don't know. I would like to mount it in the wall somewhere. <laughs> it's a bit overkill, but who cares? I can't bring myself to throw it out just yet. I can't remember what I paid for it, something silly. I think I bought it as scrap copper value. Not scrap copper, but electric motor. Because there's a lot of copper and shit in there. And it's designed to be uh, operated vertically, which is why I'm having trouble operating the mechanism. A lot of it's gravity dependent. I'm sort of fighting fighting the springs and the weight of the mechanism. Yeah, there we go. It's a fuse breaker, of course. That lever has to be in the off position before you can open the actual cabinet door. And when the door's open, you can't turn it on. So it's a safety feature. You can ch only change fuses once it's off and it's open. Yeah, fuse switch by Nielsen. Yeah, well, we'll have a look at that one later. This video is long enough. <laughs> oh well, thanks for watching. Hope you uh, enjoy the evening and what's to come. Stay tuned for lots more.